Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, we're going to look at New Mutants 98, the first appearance of Deadpool. Have we heard enough of Deadpool recently? Well, you know, with that movie in theaters right now, uh, just killing it, making all that money, I would say people are still big time into Deadpool. I mean, it helps that Hugh Jackman and Wolverine are in that movie, and that's all a whole different thing. But um, I thought... You know, let's look at this issue. Let's look at the first appearance of Deadpool. I actually had this comic in hand. I just actually barely got my hands on this. This is one of those um, facsimile editions where it's just a reprint of the original book with all the ads and everything still intact. It's kind of a interesting kind of weird little thing to get a book that's like crisp and clean and shiny and, you know, brand new. But it's just an, a reprint with all the old ads, like the old Punisher game from 1990 still on it. It's really kind of interesting thing. But um, I actually had this book in hand when the, the first weekend of the Deadpool Wolverine movie come out. But I subjected everybody to four straight videos of Liefeld Deadpool content. And so I figured I'd give you at least a week break. Um, I did not ever see this book originally when it first came out. I... Um, like most, I mean, you know, I, I was reading X-Men books and a bunch of Marvel stuff and I started seeing images of this guy and there was some talk about him. Um, but I never really got to see the first appearance of Deadpool until just recently. I mean, I watched the cartoonist kayfabe channel and they went over this book and they talked about it, but getting to kind of experience the page by page thing and read it and see it. Um, it's interesting. Um, I'm kind of shocked that Deadpool was as popular as he was. According to Liefeld, and I, I believe him, I don't believe everything he says, but um, he was saying that uh, Marvel was letting him know that the response to Deadpool was so huge that they asked him to throw him into the next issue of uh, X-Force as soon as possible. And as, as I understand it, uh, the one he was working on that was coming up was X-Force number two. So that was Deadpool's second appearance. Because, uh, you know, New Mutants 99 and then 100, those are the last two issues of New Mutants, and it rolls over into X-Force number one. But the first appearance of Deadpool, um, having, like I said, having read this, I'm like, it's not really that big a deal. I mean, I guess it's one of those things we had to have been there at the time and experienced it just to see how it kind of affected you at the time with the reading of the character. As far as covers, this cover, it's pretty damn iconic. Like, there's no denying it. It works. But the character in the book is kind of, like, it's not a big deal. I'm So, like I said, I'm kind of surprised it had the reaction that it, it ended up having after the fact. But again, you know, the time, the place, she had to be there, I guess. But, um... The essential design, the Deadpool look, is right there. Him front and center, that big red outfit. It's pretty badass. And it's funny because he introduces these three new characters right here, Deadpool, Gideon, Domino. Um, really seems like uh, Liefeld was really leaning into wanting to make this Gideon a thing. And he absolutely never became a thing. Um, he never had anything interesting while Liefeld was writing the books. And then I know other writers took and did other things with him. But he's not a character that lasted. He's not a character that has gone on to remain as anything that any anyone ever gives a shit about. And, you know, I we have to say it. For all the shit that Liefeld gets, including from me, and it's a lot, and it's with his art, to be a creator on a book and introduce even one character that breaks through into the top all-time hyper popular characters in the any you know marvel universe dc whatever you're lucky if you have one liefeld had cable and he had deadpool and honestly you know that's like top tier stuff that's right up there they're now as popular and well known as any of the x-men characters like in deadpool especially so credit to liefeld for creating deadpool and cable whether you know how much he took from other characters, Deathstroke and Spider-Man and some other things with Cable and Man Out of Time, whatever. He made a thing that worked. But then just like one tier below that, you got Domino, Shatterstar, um, Feral, I guess, kind of. But he, he's like, it's, it's like he wanted Gideon to be a thing and he was not. 
Um, being honest, uh, as much as Gideon is a big nobody, I really kind of like this drawing of him. He looks regal and dynamic and powerful and mysterious. I mean, even this face, this is like... Liefeld has a very specific way of drawing faces, especially in this era, um, influenced by Arthur Adams a lot. But I think that face looks pretty damn good. He looks intense. The hair is stupid with the little, like he's bald and the long hair down the sides and the ponytail, but somehow it looks kind of regal. And then this shot of him wearing this big giant, uh, like kimono robe or whatever the hell you would call it, it, it works. Like, I I dig it. And then to have the team kind of standing behind there, the images of their faces, like a look of shock. Look at all these new characters. You got to give it to Liefeld. This cover is a big deal. And I saw that the original art for this is going up at auction with a theoretical price of $7 million, which I think is ridiculous. But art is worth exactly what someone is willing to pay for it. And if someone wants it for $7 million, I mean... You know, good for them. So not a bad cover. So then we jump right into it. I'm also kind of curious with these facsimile editions. Um, like, did they... I, I assume they don't have access to the original art. So do they scan the old pages and kind of clean it up in Photoshop or something like that? Um, I talk often about how these old books... Like, this is like a nice, shiny, glossy paper. And the old books were printed on newsprint and the colors, you know, absorbed into that newsprint just, just differently. And the newsprint looks better. This glossy paper, it does not flatter Liefeld's weird art. Um, and that's just my opinion on that. But uh, this glossy paper, it just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't feel the same. That being said, you know, splash page of Moose Knuckle here. You know, hands flexing, he's got his ridiculous hair, he's got, like, golden arm metal sheathing and gloves. And then we gotta jump to a, it's splash page, double splash page. So then we gotta flip this thing around. And he's in the equivalent of a holodeck, or a danger room, or whatever the fuck that all these characters are always in. I do talk about this, and Life loves to do this. He puts his characters in a training room, fighting mindless robotic nobodies. And it's like, they're training. Yeah, okay, sure. It, it gets old. Um, but pretty dynamic, pretty energetic. It's got all the stuff that Liefeld gets to be known for. This was him still, in my opinion, kind of finding himself. And the best version of him becomes New Mutants 100, X-Force number one and two. Uh, this stuff is, it's kind of there, but it's kind of not for what he can do. Um I wish I could be honest with you and tell you for sure, one way or another, if I would have picked this out, um, if I hadn't watched the cartoonist kayfabe guys and had them point it out, they're showing this panel of Gideon, you know, Lifeboat's doing some, what a lot of old timey kind of classically trained comic artists would tell you don't do, which is break the border panels, have your character overlapping the border panels. Um, I think done right is perfectly acceptable, but the weird thing that they pointed on the kayfabe channel is that he breaks out of his own border, his hand, his leg there. Then he breaks the border there, but then his foot goes behind the text box. Why not just move this text box, uh, the bubble, literally anywhere else on this panel? Like, put it down here, or here, or here, or here, or here, 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 here. Here, 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 this whole area here, and here, and here. Anywhere but there, right on the foot. Like, how does that happen? And I can't help but see it, and it just looks stupid. Like, it's really bad. I mean, I don't mind the character breaking through the panel and have his little foot, like he's standing on point like a dancer, but that's ridiculous. But, you know, Gideon's fighting robots, and he, there's someone's telling him that these robots are like super enhanced droids to kick a lot of ass. And so you better be careful. And of course, Gideon's just so badass. He just defeats him easily without even breaking a sweat just because he's awesome. 
So I guess he's jumping down. You got another robot bringing him his cape. His little helper here is wearing nothing but big white spandex suit. It's kind of ridiculous. At a glance, I'm like, is this Zero from the Mutant Liberation Front? I mean, it's not. But yeah, so that's your introduction to Gideon in a training room, kicking ass, talking how he's rich and powerful and he's got plans. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? We don't know. It's kind of ambiguous. Then, oh wait, hold on. We're going to have the heroes in another holodeck training again. Got Cable and Cannonball. Um, there's some weird reproduction things going on here, and I wish I had an original copy on newsprint to look at. It makes me wonder if, like, it's, some of the line work is kind of washed out and kind of faded and kind of poorly reproduced. So it makes me think that they took a scan of an original comic and tried to clean it up and make the colors more vibrant. I'm assuming these colors are the same as the original book with, like, these highlights. I don't know. Um, look at Liefeld's weird-ass anatomy. It, but it kind of doesn't matter. You know, I remember Ed Piscor, you know, rest in peace, brother. He was saying in one of the videos about, you know, a certain amount of anatomy. He's like, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter if you know perfect anatomy. If you do, great. If you don't, you need to know, like, the basics, the basic shapes, and then you can kind of put it together in a way that would work. And that's Liefeld. Um, how's up these things holding onto Cable's hands? These big squishy padded things. It's an interesting, if not weird touch. But, you know, they're training together and they're trying to talk about how um, Cannibal needs to learn to mute the roar of his blasting for when he's blasting. He's not invulnerable when he's blasting. Um, but I, you know, I don't know if they're supposed to be fighting each other or no, I think they're supposed to be fighting together, but then cables like, I'm going to switch things up on you cannonball. I'm going to have everything attack you suddenly to teach you to think on your feet and to switch things up on a moment's notice. Um, so cable, and he does a thing here that I've never, ever seen him do ever again. Now, granted, I haven't seen every Cable appearance ever, but, you know, he's got his big robotic hand coming forward. First off, Cable had this robotic arm design that Liefeld was doing that had a kind of specific look. You can't really see it here, but these, like, things across the shoulder strap and, I don't know, these little knuckle joints on his hand. Like, he was putting in some kind of effort to make it look three-dimensional and have joints on the fingers Things like that that are kind of cool. And it's not, you know, it's not a bad hand. Cable sitting there pointing his hand, pointing his hand, right? So, yeah, and Cable's like, here, you're, now you're going to have to concentrate on a few things. He's like, you can only concentrate on one, concentrate on one thing. Can you concentrate on a few things? So he points his hand and then it goes to this weird ass panel. I remember seeing this going, wait, what? But he, uh, I, I like, did he shoot his hand? Did his hand disappear? And if you like, this background is awful. And this drawing, and the backgrounds are just awful everywhere. Because I've said it before, it's not that Liefeld, Liefeld won't do backgrounds, it's that he can't do backgrounds. He cannot do it. Um, but, you know, training's over. Cannonball's like, hey, I don't mean to be rude, Saw, but if you ain't noticed, there ain't much of a team left round here. And Cable's like, I've noticed. And um, so they're having kind of a debate about the state of the team, of the New Mutants themselves. And, you know, Cable's saying, Warlock was a casualty, soldiers die in war, Wolfsbane was e is either a defector or a prisoner, until we're sure which, we sit tight. Cannonball says, we're not soldiers, sir, we're family. And so Cable says... If life were a picnic, you'd be family. Since life is a war, you're soldiers. You'd do well to start accepting that fact. So that's fair cable kind of characterization and why he acts the way he does. He's like the proactive militant teacher rather than the pacifist um, diplomatic, you know, Professor X. And it's a good variation on a theme. New Mutants was old and boring and Liefeld's making him fun and different and unique. Um this page makes, just makes me giggle, these two pages. Um, 
I know that, like I said, when I was watching the Kayfabe channel, they had an original copy on the newsprint. I swear the colors were completely different. So, again, I'm wondering if this was recolored or just color enhanced to mimic the way it was originally done. It's just now printed on this nice paper. But this is an office building. Look at these skyscrapers in the background. Like, you've got to be kidding. But... I think this is a uh, sunspot's dad and lady brings him a cup of coffee and those are hands. That's a hand in case you weren't wondering the office building. It's like an elevated scene and <laughs> this is the best he could come up with. And then, you know, guy drinks from the cup and then I guess he's poisoned. Look at this hand here. Look at that mutation. It looks like a McFarlane hand but horrible and McFarlane's hands are not great but the guy you know keels over I guess drops dead or he's on the ground screaming as he shits himself he's like oh god that's what's going on there um who cares right I think I accidentally skipped a page nope I did not I swear these pages feel kind of thick Anyway, we'll get back to another scene where I feel like I've seen this before with Boom Boom sitting on top of a counter and then <laughs> Richter here in this ridiculous outfit with this bulging package and his weird squinty eyes and his little weird hand gesture. And then he just stands there and flexes. I guess Liefeld wanted to get rid of Richter. He's like, Richter sucks, lose him. And that's fine. So they're setting up Richter having dissatisfaction with the team. So he takes off running. They're both in the exact same pose, like the same leg pose and the, as they run. Can't you switch up the angle on him a little bit? Anyway... Now Cable, now he's in a library, and again, the kayfabe guys pointed this out. Like, not a bad perspective on the, uh, the bookshelves here, but the size of the books compared to the size of Cable, they're almost half as tall as him. They're like giant size artist editions. They're super huge books. The scale is all off. Whatever, right? Cable's there. Something zaps him, blasts him, sends him flying something. Someone attacks him. Who could it be? Oh, shit, here he is, the first appearance of Deadpool. I think it's great that the costume design has basically remained, as far as I've ever known, essentially untouched. It's like I talk about Spider-Man is the greatest costume design of any superhero ever. You can do variations on it, but it's always going to come back to the original design. Deadpool is basically the same. The thing that I like most or more about this original design that they've slightly changed, and even Liefeld does it today is his eyes were these big, giant, round, black shapes. But now everyone, including Liefeld, draws them as smaller black shapes with like kind of like points. And I dislike that. I like this giant, round shape on Deadpool's mask. Like, you could say it's kind of splitting hairs, but, I mean, there is a difference to my mind. But there he is. So it's Deadpool. Now, the fourth wall breaking did not exist in Liefeld's version. He had nothing to do with that. I don't care what anyone says. And I think the only ones who say anything otherwise is Liefeld wants to scream like, I made Deadpool. Yeah, you did. But there's elements to the character that others brought to it to make him the fully formed whole that he is in the movie. So can you at least verbalize other people's contributions? But good design. He shows up. <laughs> Look at this right here. See the piece of debris coming forward, and it's supposed to be a pointy thing overlapping Cable's leg, but they colored it in, and then Cable's leg just kind of vanishes at just right below the knee. Okay, and then, so, but yeah, Deadpool, he's got his snarky, smart-ass mouth. He's Spider-Man, but evil. That's what he is. And, you know, he he's doing kind of like the Mark Silvestri backgrounds, except bad. Sylvester so will do like random shredded debris and wisps of smoke and stuff like that, but make it look good. This, I guess, works, but it doesn't give you any kind of sense of what kind of setting they're in because it's just hiding everything. And then this shot of Cable, big head, shoulders, and then look at his little short body, and then there's just this knee popping up. How 
out of scale and out of proportion it all looks. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but now then you got this down shot of Deadpool. Again, massive fucking thick ass legs. And look, Deadpool's leaning forward. These swords should be like, you should see the top of them. They should be coming forward across his back like this, but that's beyond Liefeld's understanding. Deadpool, Deadpool, <laughs> Deadpool pulls out a gun, points it at Cable, and then Cannonball just comes zipping around. Now, we talked about earlier about how he is learning to muffle the sound of his blasting. Now, Deadpool should be enough of a badass warrior to hear that coming no matter what. But, you know, we got to have Cannonball be awesome. Look, they forgot to color in Cannonball's outfit. Look at his jacket. It's just white. Way to fuck up, guys. But, yeah, he blasts Deadpool in the back. He said, I did it. I kept my blast field quiet enough to sneak up on him. I'm just reading the southern drawl they give him. So... Deadpool, he's pissed, and so it's almost impossible to decipher what that's supposed to be, but it's something he throws at him that wraps up Cannonball. Okay, I mean, you, you get it, but at first you're like, what the fuck is this? What's going on? But Cannonball falls to the ground, Cable shows up, punches Deadpool in the face, you know, hard left hand, hard right hand. Um, Deadpool's saying, I think you broke my jaw which is like a reoccurring theme in the other appearances of Deadpool. Um, your next four is like, you broke my jaw. So it's not extremely clear, but Deadpool throws a knife into Cable's leg. It's interesting how Cable's face is the only thing heavily shadowed. Like, that's it. Why not do the rest of him or do no shadows at all? I don't understand. I do kind of like that Deadpool head right there that whole angle kind of works um this is like a weird tangent but see deadpool's leg coming forward here and then the leg of the next panel looks like it's connected whoops but yeah cable's on his ass um and then i was looking at this and the first thing is i mean deadpool's just standing there and he's shaking and behind him it says brum i swear i just thought he like picked up his leg and is fucking farting like seriously he's like Pfft. Like, he just tore ass. But then you find out it's Richter behind him doing, like, a sonic waves or whatever the fuck he does. His earthquake powers. So then, Deadpool's got another weapon. He shoots out little spider spider web things. Except just, not webs, but just, like, cables to wrap around his throat. And um, then sunspot and boomer are gonna take him on so they're all standing around and then deadpool's like ready to go and then suddenly thunk 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 sound effects he's got knives of some type in his back and then he just bends over a pile of fucking garbage that's not in front of him and domino shows up for the first time just standing there just imagine if domino and deadpool were switched it looked like he'd be fucking her in the ass right there but as, as it is, she's pegging him. Maybe that's where that scene from um, the first uh, Deadpool movie came from. Like, Domino's pegging Deadpool right there. And that's where it comes from. There's Domino. First appearance of her. Pale white skin, black spot on the eye. It's another interesting thing. Put a black spot on her eye. Deadpool's got big black spots on his eye. But some tough, badass chick who knows Cable. She shows up. She's here. She's awesome, right? Okay. Then a little bit later... They're back in this library, and there's pointy pieces of rubble, I guess. Deadpool's got a bandage around his chest, but then his hands, I guess, are supposed to be tied up. And then, what are they standing on? So Cable and Cannonball and Sunspot kind of look like they're standing on the same ground. Domino is standing on a table or something that you can't see, and so is Boomer. Like, he just stopped drawing the figures. He's like, you know what, this would be fucking hard to, like, I put the figure here. But then you get down here and you're like, I, I can't make it fit. I put Domino here, but her leg is bent. So literally her knee here and then her the, le the calf would come down. And so her foot would be here. So what is she standing on? I wish I could draw stuff and then just like, just stop drawing it and then have everyone give me millions of dollars. But yeah, Deadpool, he's a punk. They caught him. They're smiling. They're happy. Uh, these guys know each other. And then we cut to a scene with amazing cross-hatchy weird backgrounds where they're kind of going over some of the members of the team about who's useful, who's not. These guys are all gone. Cable's planning for the future. 
uh, Richter, he's had enough. So he, you know, I guess the X-Mansion had been blown up at this point. So they're all living underground. And then he's running off. He's taken off and he leaves a note for Boomer and saying like, I've got to go do something else. I got to go other shit. And then we end with Sunspot waking up and there's Gideon showing up and be like, hey, um, your dad's dead and you got to come with me. We got to go do some shit. And that's basically it. That's the comic. So again, I mean, Deadpool was all right, but was he mind-blowingly awesome in that appearance i mean he talked smack and he got punched a little bit and he punched back he wasn't amazing but for a first appearance it's kind of interesting how this thing is what everyone grabbed onto and was like oh my god this is amazing but it did it worked no doubt like liefeld's rise to stardom was well on its way and you know this is a big book and the appearance of these guys Everyone's awesome, minus Gideon. So, you know, an interesting little artifact, and I wonder if someone's going to buy that original artwork for $7 million and if Liefeld's going to be pissed off that he let it go. I assume he doesn't own it. I don't think he put it up for auction. Uh, but if I'm wrong on that, somebody please correct me. I wonder who owns it and somebody's just trying to, you know, sell it. Whatever the case is, good luck. Um, but yeah, kind of a fun little thing to look at. Finally get to see the first appearance of Deadpool because it's culturally relevant, right? Well, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.